Hey, Trey. <laughs> All right. So, a fool thinks of himself, of himself to be a wise man. A wise man knows himself to be a fool. Um, the quote that I was given was by Jimi Hendrix, knowledge talks and wisdom listens. So, I think that um, what this quote means is that um, basically you should be more inclined to listen than to open your mouth and speak about things that you might not be 100% aware of or know what you're talking about. So, um, I don't know if you guys know who Charlemagne the God is from The Breakfast Club, but uh, I listen to his podcast often. It's called The Brilliant Idiots, and one of the things that he talks about is that you should never be the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Because if you're not constantly learning, you're not constantly, you're not growing in like, the, the correlation is if you're not learning, you're not growing. So I feel like, again, if you're the smartest person in the room, you shouldn't be in there because there's always something for you to learn and something for you to gain knowledge about. So I think that it's important that more often than not, we shut our mouths and open our ears instead of you know just talking just for talking's sake. Um, I think that this quote also means that to be wise, you have to recognize that you are not the smartest person. You have to recognize that there are still a lot of things for you to learn. You may be knowledgeable in one subject, but you can also be not as knowledgeable in another subject. So the main idea is just to continue to learn and continue to grow and, and evolve. Um, so again, Jimi Hendrix said, knowledge talks and wisdom listens, and I can 100% back that. Well, I like that you had a quote that you could use as an introduction to your quote, and it, it, I thought you applied it pretty well to the topic quote. Uh, you have a reasonable thesis point based on the subject that you're talking about. I think you need a preview for the supporting material. Even though you've got a couple of good ideas, I think that it would help you develop it a little bit more, and it would also make it sound like you know exactly where you're headed. By the end of the speech, I think it's pretty clear what your point of view is, and I thought that you had a very efficient exit at the, at the end of the speech. One of the things that I always tell people is that it's less important that you fill the five minutes. What's important is that you fill the time that you do speak with something that means something to you, that you're making a point and that you're clear and we know what it is that you're trying to say. And I thought that it was very clear what you were trying to say during your presentation. Uh, delivery things, um, you're usually looking at us while you're talking to us, you seem engaged. I think your expressions could be a little bit more vivid, but you have good energy in your voice. I, I think you've got a, a nice commanding voice while you're speaking and you sound like, I know what I'm talking about, I'm fluid while I'm speaking, and therefore you should kind of be listening to what I'm saying and it comes across effectively that way. Um, I, I also thought that you, your posture and your body positioning, even though you don't move a lot while the presentation's going on, they came across not as fearful, but rather as confident. In other words, I, I know what it is, I'm, like I said before, I know what it is that I'm trying to say, and so you are you know, able to stand your position, so, so to speak, you know, kind of hold your position there. So I thought that that came across pretty effectively also. Um, you know, could you have used another example or two someplace? Yes, you could have, but I think it still sounds very good because you, you were effective and efficient in getting your point across. That's, that's all I need to say.